Smash that limiter! And hello, everybody. Welcome hello. to episode five. We have a special guest, Goose, joining us today. Hello, Goose. How are you today? Hi, how are you? I'm doing okay. That's good to hear. Um, so, uh, Goose is our special go- guest. Would you like to introduce uh, yourself? I'm <laughs> um, just a special <laughs> Goose. I'm not a special guest. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Oh, okay. You're so, all special. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. what the teachers used to tell me in school. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, um, I'm Goose. I do things. I don't know. Ask questions. I answer. Goose that's doing me. Crimes. That's Goose. Yes, that's that's me. <laughs> all sorts of fancy crimes, all though. All Only all the fanciest of, fancy. of crimes. I know, right? I mean, look at my hat. That that denotes fancy. Mm, absolutely. Res it in style. Okay. And a ninety percent chance of that hat being stolen. Well, I mean, the tag might still be on it in case I can return it later if I'm down on my luck, you know. Yeah, true. That is true. You gotta keep that price tag in it though. Yeah, yeah. No one needs to know. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> you never know when you need to go and get a burger and you're 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 out a little bit of change. You gotta return something you never purchased in the first place. <laughs> That'd be one hell of a trade though, get a burger for a hat. I mean uh, it's a, a very expensive hat. Yeah. Hand crocheted and all that. <laughs> yeah, theoretically you would need to get more than one burger for a hat. Well, depends on uh what type of burger you like. A lot of toppings, you know, a lot of extras. Yeah, it's true. Some it's, good stuff. Some of those burgers can cost up heart attack. Ridiculous amount of money, you know. Mm. I mean, I am from the USA. You know, we uh, we we charge a lot for uh, a little. So <laughs> I, I heard a story of uh, a streamer telling a story when he was in Monte Carlo during the Formula One event, and he went to a restaurant. He was taken there with some rich people that he had met there, and he was saying that the burger at this restaurant that he had. Cost like a hundred and eighty dollars, and he said, "Oh wow!" He said that the McDonald's um, burgers were better. <laughs> wait, are we talking American dollars? Or are we Euro. talking Euro? Ooh, yeah, that's even worse. That's even Yikes. worse. Yeah, it was like oh, it was, was it crusted in gold? He's he said it was just a shit sloppy looking burger, and it tasted horrible, and the meat was burnt. It was like <laughs> it was like I, w- I would have rather gone to Macca's. Yeah, that's when you have to use the bathroom, wink, and you yeah. just sort of, uh, you know, exit stage right even. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. So, Goose, on a uh, a bit of a, off that tangent, um, how did you learn to drive? Oh, man. Well, I was a young lad. Uh, started at 16 because that's what we do here. Yep. Um, I learned driving my dad's uh what was it it would had to be like a it was a chevy silverado but see he was a fireman so he he was used to driving fire trucks so he had the extended bag uh extended cab extended bed truck so this thing was long so i learned driving that so um you know it was it was quite a treat because you know you you've got this giant truck and then he's like oh just back into this parking spot you know I'm a 16 year old kid driving a 10 and a half foot long truck trying to parallel park it was uh it was a good time learned yeah. on you know yeah go ahead uh, I was gonna say like learning to drive something like that at least it would give you the skills to basically drive anything though oh yeah yeah most definitely it was just it, it's kind of weird because our house that we lived in when I learned to drive it was on a hill and we had uh, a driveway that was off of the street, but they had put two um, steel um, posts that they could close it off because they didn't like people turning around in their driveway. So my mom had always parked on the right side of the driveway. So backing a truck in when you have cars parked across the street with a metal post behind you, it was uh, it was nerve wracking to say the least. You know, you didn't want to damage the truck. You didn't want to hit anybody's car i i just you know to that point there was a few times where i'm like you know what no i can't you handle it you know (laughs) went from there did you ever get any dings or anything like that in it uh no i did not although i will say my mom had a pontiac bonneville 
And after probably about three or four months of driving his truck, you know, we drive it to my uncle's house. Yeah. Which when you ask about the, the, the car I had, I'll tell you why we went there. But I, I got to drive the Bonneville, which was, you know, fancy. And um I was so used to tur- like the turning radius of the truck driving the Bonneville. I was at a stop sign on a, a, a just a residential street. I made the turn and I was used to the, the wheel coming back a lot faster. Well, I didn't in the Bonneville. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And let's just say I introduced the front tire to the curb and ended up with a flat. Uh-huh. That, that could be worse. A uh, flat's not as bad as um, like panel damage. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the noise itself, yeah. uh, I felt my dad, you know, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I, <laughs> I went from driving a truck, you know, to this. It, it was uh, it was quite a good time. Ray um, asked, are you 10 and a half feet? That's a small truck. And are you talking what? about a truck or are you? I answered Ray's question and then, and then Ray had a go at me for answering it. How how is ten and a half feet a small truck? Or, or were you saying that that's not a small truck? I'm I'm confused at what I'm reading here. I don't know. Well, it's it's you know a comparable size is sort of like a a Ford F one fifty type of vehicle in terms of size, or is it just like a one of those? What should we say? Like large or smaller on the small end of the trucks. Like oh mine, no! It like was mine. it was the largest oh, yeah. possible truck that you could buy. Like, oh, right. You know, he had to. He drove fire trucks that were thirty, forty, you know, how whatever feet long. To his truck had to be the same, you know, gigantic. What? Why? What is a Ute? What Ute is a Ute? Is short for <laughs> utility, and it's basically the how Australian. It's what Australians call pickups. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yes, it was a it was a pickup truck. Yes. So it's kind of like this. Let's let's see. If you look at um, it. no. But, so but a flat so bed. the the front the front was, but then you had the ten foot bed on the back. Okay. Okay. Cool. Open bed. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the the pickup truck <laughs> yeah. was um and well the Ute. The reason why we call it Ute is because it was actually invented by Ford for farmers here in Australia. And then because it was so successful here, Ford decided to bring it over in America and the rest of the world. And that's where the pickup truck came to be. So and Australia- when did that happen? Oh, fucking years ago. <laughs> Just a few <laughs> days. Two, two, two days ago, this happened. Uh, it, it, was, like um, about it. it was like 1900s or something like that, I think. Okay. Yeah. Was, yeah. Like, I'll give you that one then. Yeah. Ford was in like high development prominence in like the 1930s. Yeah. I mean, you obviously had trucks and stuff, but um, Australian farmers wanted something a little bit smaller to, um, you know, to make it cheaper and whatnot. And so the Ford brought out, I can't remember what it was, but they brought out some bloody, it was like a sort of T-series sort of ute. It's a, a coupe utility made uh, about 1934, in 1934. Yeah. 1934, January 23rd, 1934. He had the final drawings Here of the uh, of the utility. Yeah, that's it there. Okay. Yeah. It's a little that's bit. a nice looking uh, vehicle. Yeah, I would mm. own that. Anyway, sorry for going on that tangent again. Thank you, Ray, for that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you learned to drive in a big-ass truck. Which is very similar to me because I learned to drive in full drives, um, like my dad's Land Cruiser and whatnot, and I've driven like Mercedes water trucks and stuff like that when I was young and tractors and stuff like that. So I, I understand uh, how you feel with the um, freaking out over the tight spaces and whatnot. Although yeah. unlike you, I did actually damage my dad's you. <laughs> <laughs> I reversed into a tree. Oh, nice, nice. It's, in my defense... It was a single lane road out in the middle of nowhere when we were going hunting. And uh, we needed to turn around and it was less than a car length width of this road. And I had to do a 
God knows how many turns to turn around and then go back. Were you like Austin Powers? It was thirty six turns. Did you work it anywhere? Basic? No, nah, not like, like that. I did. Thing. I did get somewhere. <laughs> but like in in a in a in a land cruiser, you don't have many. Um, you get lots and lots of blind spots, so yeah, you yeah. can't. It's really hard to tell distance or like how close you are to something, especially since mm-hmm. like the tow ball overhangs a bit. And you know this this U is uh, it's a little bit shorter than that Silverado that you were talking about, but it's still pretty long. Like it's two point mm. six meters long, like the tray itself. Um, so, so yeah. So you were like, this tree's not going to stand in my way, and you just yeah. gunned it. I mean, it was a. Steel- then you had firewood too. You were good to go. Yeah, it was um, eight and a half feet tall. Oh, not tall. Yeah, it's a two point six meters about a point five three feet. Yeah, it's a long See, try. Spliffy's good. He broke it down for me. I was gonna Google it. I was too lazy. <laughs> Wasn't happening. I was just gonna sit here and shake my head. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> two point six meters. You know the weird thing about it, right? Is like these guys work in Imperial and whatnot, but when it comes to actually like engineering side of things, like because I know a few people that do like metal fabrication in the states. And they all work in metric. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely it's because crazy. it's the smart thing to do. But yeah. we're, you know, we're not always smart. So well, I also learned from someone. I don't remember who it was, but they were explaining. Wait, wait, hold one was, second. Yeah. You can't start a sentence with "I also learned" and then give me something that's going to be educational. But <laughs> go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in a conversation we had, I think it was with Kelt a little while ago. Um, that there are two versions of of uh, a foot length. There's a more accurate version, and then there's just the regular foot length, and that sort of did my head in because I thought, what's the point of having two different versions of feet? So didn't that go back to, like, the king's measurement of whatever the size the king's foot was versus what an actual foot would be? Quite possibly, but I wouldn't really know. Oh, by the way, Ray corrected me. Uh, the first use actually that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a mod cool. and a researcher. I like it. Yeah, it's Ray's, almost like a Ray's a jack of all trades. You know. <laughs> <Don't> mean... <laughs> I'm not a brat. We're having fun. Uh... We're, we're, you know. Um. Yes, yeah, so so you've uh, learnt to drive in a large big at pickup truck like that. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to bloody everything's happening at once. Of course, Why what was the be? other questions I was going to ask you? Flashing noise, <laughs> flashing noises, and strobing sounds. Oh. oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. What is your first car? Oh, get ready for this. My mm-hmm. first car was a 1982 Chrysler LeBaron. Two door, non turbo, four cylinder. My friends and coworkers called it the Granny GT. <laughs> <laughs> this thing. So the reason I learned to drive on the back country roads oh. is we would always go to my uncle's house. <laughs> so there, it's a long, convoluted story. But basically, my cousin, who is probably about twelve years older than me, was dating a girl who had the car originally and they were getting rid of it for a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, everybody's first car was, was a hundred dollars. Um, mine was, (laughs) (laughs) so the problem was, was the transmission was shot. So we ended up getting a new transmission, but my uncle actually, um, had a garage. He, uh, raced drag racing. So he had an old Chevy Nova that he would, you know, drag race in. So we took it to his garage, swapped out the transmission, took the engine completely apart, cleaned out the pistons, cylinders, everything like that, like completely, you know, redid the whole car. Um, So not the convertible. So it's kind of like that. uh, More like that one. Like that one. But see, that's convertible. Yeah. Why are they all convertible? I, that's that's a good question, and uh, <laughs> almost all of them were turbo as well. But mine was non-turbo. Oh, really? So wait, stop, 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 stop. Go back up the blue one. 
the blue one that you saw, the light powder blue right there, almost exactly like that except oh, two to one. Oh. This <laughs> thing was this thing was sky powder blue, and we actually redid the vinyl top because it was completely destroyed. Like this thing was, I mean, it was it was just something. Um, <laughs> I owned that car until I was probably twenty two. Um. You had a good run with uh, that. Uh, listen, <laughs> it, it got to the point where uh, it, it, it leaked oil eventually, <laughs> just like the seals gave way. And I'm like, you know what? I don't even care. I ran it for a summer without oil, trying to kill the car. <laughs> it made it through three months, no oil in the car. What? It would not die. That is incredible. That is insane. That is. Uh... I. So. So it started to get the fall. I'm like, you know what? You deserved it. Oil change, everything. I'm like, okay, you're sticking around. Um, the transmission would start to slip. Like you'd throw it in a reverse and you'd yeah. sit there for a good 15 seconds. And then, boom, it would slam it in a reverse. Oh. You know, so, so, yeah, <laughs> it was, it, 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 uh, it, it's, it, it had a good life. Um, drove it, you know. It would go anywhere in the snow. It was front wheel drive. It would go. There's some pretty steep hills where I live in Pennsylvania. It would go through snow, up hills. It didn't matter. No problem whatsoever. When the car finally died, I was coming home from a job, pulled into the driveway, backed it in, tried to pull forward. It was just done. Would not shift gears, change gears at all after that. So I put it in park called a tow truck company they gave me a hundred dollars for the car and took it away <laughs> you got your money's back yeah <laughs> wow well, that, that that car owed you nothing yeah oh, it was, <laughs> i literally tried to kill it the only problem with it was when it was leaking oil it wouldn't pass emissions so in the uh, united states i don't know if you guys have this but if you keep the car under five thousand miles a year you get an exemption yeah, and you get oh. passed through. So in the later life of the car, it didn't get as much road use as it used to. But I mean, yeah, it was, it definitely was a good first car. Yeah. There's certainly a hardy car that, um, was pretty, I, I did the same thing. Like I would drive my car without oil and water and the radiator for like ages. Just like, I, I remember like pulling into uni and opening the radiator cap and like, Ooh, there's rust. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you expected steam to spit out. You got shrapnel in your eyes. Yeah. yeah you got... <laughs> and the thing was like, I... the thing was so, the thing is like the motor on that thing was uh, actually like, you know, the old school motors that had like the air vents and like the cooling fins and that on the block. Yeah. 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 That motor yeah. had cooling fin fins. So theoretically it didn't need the radiator. And you just duct tape them just to see how how far you could push it. You shut them all up just to see what would happen. <laughs> no, nah, I, I wasn't that smart back then, you know. <laughs> Man, that car! I'll tell you what, that thing. Like, I just wanted it to die. I just was ready, you know. I'd saved up so much money, wanted to buy a new car, you know. And I was like, I'm not going to just get rid of it. I want it to die, you know. I want to kill it. <laughs> yeah. I beat it to death, and it would not die. And it got me home from work. That's all that mattered, I guess, in the end. So impressive. Yeah. Oh, but cool. but the chrome hubcaps that I had on that thing. Oh, let me tell you, this thing was. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had a picture, but you know, back in those days, we didn't actually have cell phones. So. Yeah, and uh, everything everything was the old uh, film, I'd imagine as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that old, but you know. Technology just hadn't. <laughs> One point two megapixel cameras were, you know, super crazy back yeah. in the day. <laughs> well, film like I had a uh, a photograph, like a film camera, for years before I got my digital. My first digital I got when I was seventeen, no sixteen. Um, I I used to always have film. I just had like a cheap fucking uh, rind up one. You know the one with the little handle, and you go. Nee, 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 nee. Oh man! Yeah, I had one. Did of you? Did you ever develop your own film? No, no. I was. Um, I would go into my local Kmart and do that. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not that sophisticated. Yeah, 
Well, in high school, we actually had like photo, you know, photography classes. Yeah. So we would have the old like Nikon's, and you know, you'd get this like weird bag, and you'd be able to pop open the roll and sh- and spool the uh, film and develop it all yourself. It was quite interesting. It was a good time. Yeah, a lot of schools around here did that as well. Um, my school had it in media. Uh, but, um, but I, I never really got into it. It's funny how, like, I got in, like, I was into media, so, like, I made films and stuff like that, um, and I used to enjoy, we had a radio station at our school, like, a proper radio station with, like, a full sound, sound, um. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we had the full deal. It had, even had a radio license as well, so we could broadcast live and shit. Um. Yeah, so like that was a lot of fun. I used to I liked doing the radio and I liked making the films and stuff like with back in the day with iFilm when it was still good. Um Wait, hold on, hold on. How did I pronounce Nikon wrong? It's uh in Australia it's called pronounced Nikon. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. But then again you spell you you pronounce Nissan weird too. Oh, I have to hear this. <laughs> I, I pronounce what bro? Nissan? Nissan? Yeah. But it's literally Nissan. Look up an American. <laughs> <laughs> like they say it's N I S S A N. Nissan. I I don't I don't know. No, it's Nissan. We, Nissan, yeah. Although you're probably Where's the O? Where's the O no. in the word? Tell me. In the accent, that's where yeah. it is. Nissan. So, is, is there like a swoosh somewhere? Am I missing something? Well, the because I oh, a in the N makes N. Also, because mm. it's double S and I S, yeah. which is and then you um uh, syllabalize it like Nissan. Okay, so let me ask you a question: Why would the actual car manufacturers pronounce it wrong then, if it was supposed to be pronounced that way? Because they're American. Ah. <laughs> Cause, cause, I don't know. No, because, like, no, think about it. Like, obviously, like, Nissan would have a dealership in America, right? So when they pronounce it on your ads, they pronounce it like that because they're trying to target the audience. Because over here, they say, they say Nissan. All right, I need to see a uh, an yeah. ad from Australia. Yeah. Oh, we, we could pull one up. Um, we could pull up a Nissan a ad. Nissan Navara. Get yours Ooh, today. Yeah. My, we have to do that considering, you know, the nav's my thing. I can go absolutely anywhere. Ah, uh, yes, yes. The Nissan Navara. Yes. Got it. Nissan Navara. That's the um the NP300 version, it's like the new version that I've got. Okay. Oh man. Oh, yeah. my legs are so sore from leg day yesterday. How was <laughs> leg day yesterday? I was good. Did you squats? I didn't do squats, but I did a lot of step ups and and I went on the machines that did all the feet shit. Did oh, yeah. you do weighted step ups or just stra- standard step ups? Yeah, I did weighted. I was doing like five kilo ones, and then Ray gave me seven kilo ones. But I think I need to use ten. Uh, let me see here. Hold on. Uh, seven kilo two pounds. <laughs> oh, it's about about Wait, half. 15, so... f- Fifteen pound step ups. Yeah. Oh, sir, sir, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to give you some training advice. Well, if you're not doing fifties and up, you're not doing step ups. <laughs> okay, David Dawkins. <laughs> I um, yeah, I I I started off for baby steps because I don't know what level I'm at with fitness rise. Turns out I'm still pretty fit, even though you know, a bit more pudgy than I used to be. But yeah, still, body still squats never hurt anybody. That's it. Yeah, rock, <laughs> rock out a nice thousand body squats. You'll be good to go. That's it. Yeah, just just casually hold the record for the most amount of chin ups. Well, it's funny because like Ray was like, "How many how many reps have you done?" And I'm like, "I think I've done four in a row." And she's like, "You haven't rest between each one." I'm like, "No." And she's like, "You have to rest." <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you don't, and I was you don't doing the week. Two. I was doing if you don't have to rest, that rest that means you need more weight. Yeah, I honestly, <laughs> I I could have kept going, you know. But we had to walk last night because we went to like a cool light show event thing, 
and um, we like we knew we were going to walk around, so it was like we can't kill our legs that badly, but we can't walk, and we need wheelchairs to do the event. <laughs> so that would have been kind of fun. <laughs> that would have been really cool to go around on electric scooters around the uh, event. We have electric scooters everywhere. They're so annoying. I mean, like the 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 um old timey little electric scooters, 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 scooters. Yeah, I wonder Ooh. why why do they do it? Do you know much about um? So you, you do you know much about the Nissan two hundred and forty goose? I do not know. So it's no, like a, much- it's like a sports car um, from Nissan. It's um, it, it's basically I think it's a four cylinder motor, four cylinder turbo motor. But in Australia and everywhere else in the world, it's actually called the Nissan one hundred and eighty or uh, an S fourteen. Um, is another name for it. And um, for some reason in America, they changed it from 180 to 240 for no real reason. Same with like my car, the Navara. It's called the Frontier over there as well. Uh, I mean, probably because it's, you know, America and we want everything to be like, you know, big numbers and <laughs> yeah, I guess. double size. <laughs> Okay, so I actually did a quick Google. So the 180SX was named for its 1.8 liter cadet engine, yeah. where the 240SX was named for the 2.4. So I'm guessing. I don't. I don't. So I guess in America they just had a different motor in it, which I think was yeah, different motor. Those dogs said because they put down a power power mo- powered motor in it. So they didn't like America. Yeah, or safety regulations and all that fun stuff. You guys get to have all the fun. Well, depends on who you talk to. Every single car needs. I think it's. I think it's. It's. It wouldn't surprise me if this is the case, but I'm pretty sure every single car needs to have a five star safety rating or crash rating, essentially. Yeah, they do uh, now. In order to be sold. Yeah. And since 2013, so it's been about a decade since, yeah, since dealerships um, haven't, uh, aren't, they, dealerships aren't allowed to sell a car since 2013 unless they have uh, the ABS system and the EBS system in it. Yeah, so that's, so a, that that's a 180. Safe. Yeah. Otherwise, they can't be sold. I just realized when you were talking about safety ratings, it made me remember something about the car that I owned. Ooh, so if um, you look up, if you look up the Chrysler logo on yeah. the LeBaron on the front, it was the Chrysler logo, but it was like a a crystal. Yeah, yeah, oh, on, I see. On, yeah, on the steering wheel of my car was one of those crystals. So when you're driving and the sun hit it. You would you would literally be blinded. Oh, really? By, right. by your steering wheel, yes. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. Talk about God. safety ratings. Oh, <laughs> <man. Safety> ratings. <laughs> the sun would be setting it, hit the hit the little diamond thing in the center, and you'd be blind for a second. I'm like, oh, this is. I never did anything to correct it, That's mind like, you. That's but... like um, oh, what was it? It was mini. It was the mini. Yeah. So uh, when mini first came out. In the early days, right? So they had two safety issues. One was the glove compartment had two sharp edges and the latch was too weak. So when someone <laughs> would rear end them, <laughs> oh, sorry, that came out of nowhere. Um, the glove compartment would open up and decapitate the passengers. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yep. Then um, there was also the same problem in that same car where the fuel compartment. So the fuel tank was too close to the rear end. So when the car would get rear end, the car would explode. <laughs> so I the, mean, so, so the poor occupants of the car would one blow up and get decapitated <laughs> at the same time. Right? <laughs> safe. That, 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 that's perfect. Think about it. It's perfect. If you were in that bad of a crash and your partner, whoever got decapitated, I mean, what's a what's an explosion? You well, know, a, you, a spray, yeah. you, you might as well. You'd be so devastated. You know, like. I suppose Just, yeah, uh, this is fine. <laughs> I, I, I guess I can imagine that in 1950s, you'd probably be thankful that you'd only have to pay for a funeral and not medical bills. I remember seeing Sorry. a um, 
well, you'd asked if, you know, I'd ever damaged my dad's truck. I remember yeah. seeing an accident. I So in my 17 to 18 years age, I worked at a Lexus dealership. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, I've driven some very nice cars. Yeah. Um, so the Lexus dealership didn't have parking for their employees because why would they? You know, so we had to actually park on the street across from the place. There was someone had a BMW parked and it was at the end of the line of cars. And there was a, a, a hill with a turn that would lead onto the road with the car dealership. Uh, back in this was early 90s. So the Kia, a Kia comes down around the bend and doesn't make the turn wide enough to miss the car, hits the bends in the back. Or BMW, I can't remember which one it was. The key was basically totaled from like a five to ten mile, mile mile per hour collision. The other car was perfectly fine. Oh wow! So, yeah. Oh, it was it was just watching it, and I was like, oh, but now you know, like you said, with the safety standards, yeah, you know, all the cars have improved so much that you know, I believe Kia is now you know pretty high. Uh, Especially, I think it's the Telluride. I don't know if you guys have one of those over there. I don't, I don't know. Think so. It doesn't sound nah. familiar at all. Tell, what is it called? A it's a Kia Kia Telluride. It's a SUV. Tell, yeah. SUV. Tell, oh, okay. Telluride. I don't know. Nah, oh, I don't think so. Okay, I actually cannot come to Australia because it's only made in left-hand drive. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah we Wait. definitely do not have them. It looks like they can go yeah. off-roading too. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I've taken some uh, RX 300s and RX 400s off-roading yeah. before. <laughs> the um, This is my favorite Lexus, the LFA. I love these. It is so nice. Cars. Okay. That is a nice-looking car. Yeah, they are so fast. <laughs> see when i was working there i think that no i don't believe that the um it was the sc 300 and 400 i think the sc 300 and 400 were the only cars that they had that were still manual uh yeah. transmission so i learned how to drive a manual on a customer's car oh wow you know, oh because i mean it wasn't really well I, so basically what i did was um the Lexus dealership that I worked at was the only one within a three state area. So yeah. people would come there to buy their cars, but we would pick their cars up for service wherever they lived. So I would drive to Ohio, West Virginia. Wow. Um, yeah. So I mean, sometimes four or five hour trips. So you would take a loaner car out there, drop it off, grab their car. Yeah. Well, I got in and I'm like, Oh, it's a stick. <laughs> I had a general idea of how it worked. You know, I mean, we didn't have one, so I didn't learn on it. Um, but I figured it out after a few stalls, made it back. Everything was fine. You know, that I learned, knew how to drive a stick after that, mm. but, uh, nothing like learning on a forty fifty thousand dollars car. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sort of the same situation. I learned how to drive manual, uh, with my, uh, company's vans or well, the, um, the company I work for is, uh, vans. They're all, most of them are all manual. So, um, so I had to, I was just like, all right, I'm going to learn how to drive manual on the open road in this busy street. And yeah, yeah that works. And I eventually got it. You know, you, you stall out at a green light, everybody mm. honks their horns. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, get, they get so angry at you. It's annoying. Mm. Yeah. You bunny hop along yeah. and, you just, and you're just like, you hold your hands and say, I'm like, help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you accidentally throw it into the too lower gear and yeah. you just oh, like, fuck it. up. Oh. Even even now, every now and then, like I'll like do something stupid and store my car and I'm just like Fuck I was <laughs> doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> we had such a yeah. good thing happening. <laughs> Why? When you were jamming. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm disappointed my ancestors. Yeah. That's Lucky funny, you had your seatbelt on or you'd have whiplash. And, oh, uh, yeah. 
I just realized that my Facebook bloody notices are coming through my thing. I uh, gotta keep things muted, man. Okay, so what <laughs> get is it some, together? What is some bloody crazy <laughs> stories? I'm trying, all right? I'm trying. I'm just thinking <laughs> about stalling all the time. Uh, don't try, do. <laughs> okay, uh, crazy story. Well, so uh, here's, I mean, basically all the crazy stories I have have been driving Lexuses yeah. because I did all kinds of dumb stuff because, you know, you're a young kid, you're in a loner car, yeah. why not take it off-roading, you know? Why not do <laughs> 120 miles an hour down a highway? Um, so the... Lexus came out with, I believe it was the IS-250, I think it was, back in the day. Yeah. And this was their first smaller sports car. Like, that's what they called it. It was the, the IS was International Sport, whatever. Um, it also came in a manual, but it had a automatic as well. But the thing about it was the automatic had, for the gear shift, it had a metal ball for the gear shifter yeah so the first time i'd ever gotten into the car it was a summer day the oh, sun was shining on it boy. i burnt a circle in my hand <laughs> grabbing the metal ball they didn't really think that one through using real metal no. on a on a shifter yeah. but i had you know we had one as a loaner car to get people you know interested in wanting to buy it so i had to go pick a car up i think it was probably an hour away and I got off on the wrong exit. So I had to go back the other way and I had to be at this person's house by a certain time so they could go to work. So, you know, young kid in a sports car, I'm flying doing a hundred miles an hour down the highway, hundred to 120. Well, yeah. I'm in, I'm in the fast lane, which in the United States is the left-hand lane. A tractor trailer decides to try to pass somebody mm. in the slow lane they pull out doing i'm gonna say 70 um while i'm doing 120 so i see this happen and in my brain i'm like i'm probably gonna die because i'm closing the gap <laughs> so fast yeah and in my mind i'm like okay you can't hit the brakes because you know not hitting the brakes doing 120 you're just gonna it's going to be all over. Yeah. So, you know, I just I let off the gas completely and I'm slowing down a little bit, but luckily the truck driver had the wherewithal and saw what was happening and pulled back over, flew past them, slowed down, you know, heart racing, sweating. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just, yeah. Uh, it was, it was horrible. Um, got there on time though. <laughs> I, I made it there on time, but I, I then I, I, I learned to, you know, a very speed valuable limit. lesson. And, and <laughs> yeah, to, and and the next day you realize that you need to start wearing more brown pants. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that that gray interior um, was no longer gray after I was yeah. done with it. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot uh, of different snow stories too. Yeah. You know. Yeah, my mum uh, refuses us to drive in the snow. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I um. A lot of the cars had the uh, the emergency brake pull handle, yeah, which was always fun in the snow because you know you'd drift it, you'd pull it, you'd slide a little <laughs> yeah, bit in the snow. Yeah. Well, the way it was set up at the dealership was there was the service area with the giant bays, and then there was parking for the cars that were getting worked on, and then there was a detached building for washing cars. So I was getting a car to take it to the service bay. And I came around the bend and thought it would be funny it had just snowed to hit the handbrake to, oh, you know, yeah. drift around the corner. Yeah. Well, you know, I hit the handbrake to drift. I started drifting and, of course, ice. So yeah. I'm sliding and there's a parked car sitting there oh, and I'm going, no. I'm going. Literally an inch. I stopped. The car stopped. Oh. An inch away from hitting it. Never damaged Ooh. a car. Never wrecked a car. So I'm accident free. You know, that, no, no damager. That yeah. you, uh, I tip my hat, man. You have some luck on your side. <laughs> oh, oh man. Let me tell you, I, oh, it, it was the pucker was real. Yeah. Everything was inside of me at that time. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can just imagine your boss just like looking at you and just you almost did it in your life and it's just like fuck I can't tell oh. him off <laughs> I mean, don't do that again I mean I, no oh. I think he already you... knows that he was almost in trouble then <laughs> Yeah. We did a lot, of, a lot of dumb stuff. A lot of dumb stuff. Uh, they had an LS four hundred, I believe. It was, it was a real nice luxury sedan. Yeah, but it was a rear, rear, rear wheel drive car. Yeah. So if you stood on it, you could spin the back tires real nice. So we would, of course, be in the wash bays, and they had tire shine, which back in the day was silicone based. Yeah. So you would spray the ground down and then do burnouts and just like fill the whole building with smoke. Oh, <laughs> oh my it God. was just, yeah, all bad news. What, uh, what is the coolest car you've ever driven or, and what is a car that you uh, wish you could own if you had the opportunity? Coolest car I've ever driven. It would have to be the Nova. I yeah. mean, my my uncle's Nova. I mean, this thing was the epitome of horsepower. Like you know, you know, ready to go. You hit that gas. You were you were breaking your neck from just the the torque on that thing. Um, I would um, have to say probably that. It's like these ones, isn't it? Um, I believe it was. Yeah, like the blue one there. His what? was a burgundy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're a cool yeah. car. There's a couple of running mm-hmm. around here in Australia that I've seen. Um, the coolest car I was very fortunate with me and a bunch of high school kids that made friends with a very wealthy man um, near our high school. We got to drive in one of these. He let us oh, drive. Wow. He let us drive his oh. around the car park. Um, I don't know why, because I think he was crazy. You know, considering I mean, a couple of million dollar car, and he let. Bunch you of you would have kids to be without too. car licenses drive it, but you know. <laughs> yes, why not? I mean, when you if you're that wealthy, there's literally nothing that can. Yeah, you. he was super nice. I think the reason why he let us drive it is, um, so he would like walk around the school and whatnot, and we used to like hang around the back near the fence, and um, and like he would swing past, and like he wasn't a creep or anything like that. He wasn't that sort of dude. He liked talking to us because he saw that we were a bit of loners from the rest of the things and he was the same like um because he went to the school that was adjacent to our school which was um i'm not going to mention the name of it but his son goes to that school as well so he like used to get along with the people back in his day used to get along with the people at the school that i went to plus his school and um so he would like he was very close with the community and whatnot in the area and uh and we knew his son and his son was a complete dickhead like one of these ones where like he's a wealthy kid, but like his dad's trying everything he can so he doesn't grow up spoiled like a little shit. <laughs> and um, and so like his dad wouldn't just give him money. Like he he didn't have phones or anything. Like his dad said, you had to earn everything you get. You have to work for it essentially to which, try and get him some which is respect. Good. Yeah, exactly. He was a good it's guy. Good. It's just his son. I think it's because his son thought his dad's so rich that he's untouchable, but. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know um, what he was doing hanging around with you hoodlums hanging back by the fence. Well, oh, you fence guys. I know why because yeah. we knew his son and we didn't like him. So I think he used to talk <laughs> to us to get dirt on his son to make sure he's behaving. Anyway, that he morning, didn't like his own son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His daughter was lovely. His son was a dropkick. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so that morning, we had noticed that this ferrari drove past like one of the what was it It was a italiano i think it was a ferrari italiano i don't know drove past with a guy driving with p plates on it and then p plates are probation drivers so that's like you get your learner's permit then you get your probation for a certain time then you full license that's how it works here and um and we're like what the fuck type of person would let his son drive his ferrari (laughs) and then we saw We saw the kid driving it. We're like, what? No <laughs> way. And um, so when his dad walked past, he was like, hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah, And we're like, hey, did you let your son drive the Ferrari to school? And um, and he was just then like. Then the book came off. Uh-oh. And then and then he was just like, what? 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we saw him driving past with the Ferrari, in the Ferrari, oh, such and such. And he just goes, he's like, thank you very much, guys. Um, I will pay you back on this one. And then, yeah, he like, uh, he like grounded oh, his son. Snitches, all of you. You dirty snitches. <laughs> he he grounded uh. his son and then forced him to get a job at the local McDonald's where he was cut off completely of all money and had to earn oh, all his money. Wow. And he took his That's car cool. off him, which was like some Corolla thing. It wasn't an expensive car, but he took his car off him and fucking sold it. Um, and then he, oh. yeah, he, uh, <laughs> his son did not like us after that. Oh, no, man, I wouldn't. But Far in, out. In, so in repaying <laughs> us, what he needed it. in repaying us back, he brought a whole heap of his cars to one of the shopping centers that uh, he happened to own, and um, he let us kids and a few others uh, sit and ride in his car, and he let a, a handful of us that had our learner permits or P P plates, and um, he would let us drive these expensive cars with him in the car, obviously, and. Yeah, it was in so, a car park, so he would get us to go on like a low gear and then let us just go and do circles in yeah. the car park. Still, it was cool, but yeah, it's, it was um, <laughs> it's so funny. So, um, was to answer your question, I believe it was a seventy-two. Seventy-two. The the Nova. Nice. Yeah. So I, I will say that was probably the coolest car I drove, but. As far as luxury cars, I mean, I know I worked for Lexus, but I, I, I've i driven BMWs, I've driven, you know, Mercedes, everything like that. There's nothing quite like driving a Lexus, like the comfort. Like, so the, the thing I liked it when in the LSs was there was a little vent under the steering wheel that would blow cold air on your balls. <laughs> Best feeling in the world. <laughs> Best feeling in the world it, when you're just driving along and ah, uh, so but the cars were so quiet inside. There were times that I've actually accidentally double started the car. Like you start the car, you get in, you're oh, looking at the paperwork, everything, yeah. and you don't think the car is on, and you you know turn the key again, and you get that nice uh, the nice grind. Yeah, yeah, nice grinding yeah. down from the starter motor. <laughs> but I mean, I don't think I've ever been in another brand of car that was so quiet in the cabin like just riding in in general hmm. okay i'll have to keep that in mind if i ever want a, a lexus oh man there's some deep thoughts going on over there yes there sorry someone's annoying me at the moment um oh how dare they i know it's, 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 give me their number i'll take care of it <laughs> <laughs> i'll deal with that later yeah. um yeah it's it's actually about the podcast but oh. um yeah i'll talk to you later essentially it's like no for it can't take no for an answer um what other so what what's car do you own now then um right now well actually i own the kia tell you right uh, that's oh, one of the okay. cars that I own. <laughs> that's oh. why I brought it up. Um, I mean, it's actually riding in that thing is it's a, it's a dream in and of itself. Yeah. Um, I have a Honda pilot just for regular, just junk it around, yeah. throw stuff in. Um, I'm not sure what, the, if they have pilots over there or the equivalent. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look. Uh, what uh, else? Is it called a Kia Pilot, is it? Uh, no, it's a Honda Pilot. So I have the Honda Pilot is just like the... I think it's a 2000 yeah. and... Oh, it's just like a, it's just an SUV looking thing. Yeah, just just an SUV. So I have yeah. the two SUVs. Um, I have just a... I have a Nissan Altima. Yeah. That's a 2022. Um Let's see. And that's that's about I I do have uh a 1971 Honda scooter that I bought when I was a young lad from a so uh, that that's a whole story in and of itself but we had a cabin probably about north of us about an hour or so and there was a farm that we would walk to to buy eggs when we were up there and they had this it was a red and white 
Honda scooter. And this thing, you know, it's it was an old guy that owned it. Apparently the the lady's husband died and she was trying to get rid of it. So I bought it. I still have it today. I'll have to take a picture of it and send it to you guys. But I mean, it's it's street legal, but you know, it's like it would be like driving a um what are those uh scooters nowadays? Uh Vespa. It, it's yeah, it would be like, yeah. So Yeah. That's that's it. That's the uh, car stable at the moment. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Like it's good to have like large cars like that. People like always whinge a bitch about having a big car, but like it, it's necessary because like you know how annoying is, you know how annoying it is when you like say go to IKEA to get furniture and you can't fit in your car. Yeah, yeah. Like what's yeah. the and I. And even stuff that shouldn't fit, you can fit it in there if you try hard enough. Yeah, true. <laughs> you put down all the seats, the passenger seats tilted back. And, you know. Although I have uh, seen some people try to stuff a, a television that's bigger than the car in the car. Well, at least they didn't put it on the roof. Um, well, they probably tried after that. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> you see the box I, just bend. <laughs> I, I see that shit all the time at work. I see people um, like getting big ass um items at like nine meters and they just duct tape it to the roof and drive off it's like <laughs> seriously <laughs> oh man oh my God. I, i've been i've been contemplating for a while a tesla though i just something about the I, tesla sport i would um i would recommend get look at the car manufacturer electric cars over the teslas and see whether um, they are more beneficial to you and your needs. Not because Tesla's bad or anything. It's because, like, you, you <sighs> Teslas aren't as cost-effective as, say, some of the other car manufacturers. And, like, there's a lot of hidden charges Teslas do as well. Like, you know the hooking up the fast charging to your house? That's not included with your Tesla price. I could do that myself. No, yeah. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> but, but yeah, I know you could. But, like, you know, that, that's my thing. Like, when you buy, like, say, for example, uh, Kia. Kia's um, electric car is really good. The I okay. Ionic. You know, when you buy a car, it's like $23,000 Australian. So, it's not very expensive. They yeah. come to your house and fit the charging system all included in the pricing. And then with their battery setup, um, it's all modular designed. So as you're going through its lifespan and a battery starts to fail, they work out which battery is failing and they swap it with another one and do a buyback system. So you don't have to replace your entire battery bank. Unlike the Tesla where you have to drop the entire um, skid down, the whole battery bank replace the whole battery. So, you, you yeah. And they're just as really... fast as well. They're all the same so this speed. purchase wouldn't really be more so about cost efficiency it's yeah. just like a, a thing that i want you know it looks like sick. I, I don't, I don't okay. know you know it's it's the, the novelty I don't, of I don't, I don't, Tesla? Yeah. well i no. it's just i don't need it but you know i think it would be fun to have you know you, fun to whip around a little bit yeah you know <laughs> just, just for like just short trips well. i take it you got yeah. do you have solo in your house uh i don't i, I actually get solo consider, yeah get well, solo if you're gonna get one because it's about they're expensive, so yeah. To charging is yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. cheaper than fuel. Ignore that bullshit when people say that. Yeah. So um, oh yeah, most definitely not. To put it into perspective, right? To charge one Tesla, and this goes for all EV cars. To charge one Tesla or one EV, it is the equivalent of running a house twenty four hours with all appliances running. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, and so solar is like the best way to go. I was actually, it's kind of funny you brought that up because I've been looking a lot lately. There's a lot of companies now that do the shingles that are actually yeah. solar panels. Yeah, they're cool. So I, 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 yeah, I was thinking about doing the whole roof that way and then the battery yeah. banks and everything like that. Yeah, you know, that's I, so. sick. That's, that's a really good design. I remembered um, when they were designing the shingles, some guy came into uni one day and he came into, um, I don't know who the fuck he was. He was from some company. I bet you, I bet you money. He was like from one of these development companies. Cause this was years ago as well. 
And he was his name was Elon, him, but we won't say that. No, <laughs> we won't go there. Come on, we all know that Elon didn't design <laughs> shit. He paid someone. <laughs> he probably paid this guy the to come to his. people do. So, um, a little bit of backstory about solar. Solar was actually invented in Australia. Oh, everything can't always be invented in no, Australia, no. sir. The, the solar panels were invented in Australia <laughs> and then sold to the, a year. The paint was sold to a European company, and then, um, and then obviously, like you know, it's boomed from then on. So, like a lot of solar companies do a lot of their testing and trials and R and D here in the country because, well, it's Australia. It's fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good yeah, way to test it. Yeah, there. exactly. So, um, anyway, so this guy came into one of the lectures and he was like, "Now, you guys are all like sciences, and you guys know how like animals work and whatnot, and we want to design like a solar panel that kind of replicates the scales of like reptiles because you know they're." Uh, energy absorbent rating is ridiculously efficient and yada 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 and us and we were like well have you ever looked at like uh for example the sleepy lizard which is a, a lizard that i did my research on i said the way the sleepy lizard scales work is they no matter what angle they are facing the sun they absorb optimum heat from the sun basically the scales are like solar panels essentially and they're like oh that's really cool and then you know they sat down with us and we explained how it all works and how the anatomy on them works and how all that stuff works and then fast forward to a few years ago when the the um like you said the solar shingles came to be and i was like it's funny how the surface area of those shingles looks very similar to a sleepy lizard scale because if, so your- <laughs> if you have a look at them they got slight little ridges and stuff like that 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 are kind of like hexagonal hexagonal shape which is exactly like a sleepy lizard scale so i wonder so if what- that guy was an r&d dude for I- them Probably, I feel like yeah. it'd yeah. be too coincidental. I feel like it's just a humble brag that he's saying that he invented solar shingles. <laughs> that's, that's what that was. No, I like, didn't. Oh, no, you know. <laughs> we assisted in some random guy's idea. But I mean, the durability of them alone, like, yeah. you know, as far as shock resistance and everything, I mean, I, I feel like I'm probably going to end up doing that. But, you know, I, I just, I don't know, for some reason, I always like the the look of the Tesla car, like the sport model, the one that can go like, yeah. you know, zero to 9,000 in two seconds. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I probably will never buy one. It's just, you know, something I kick about every once in a while. I, um, I like the fact that they can sing happy birthday on your birthday. <laughs> oh, that would creep me out. Uh, just get out. Just get in, in the morning. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. You start your car and your car starts singing to you. You think, oh crap, what the hell's going on? <laughs> What's going on? I actually, I actually read an article today that some hackers actually figured out a way to bypass a lot of the stuff that's locked behind paywalls. I so I mean, you know, I kind of, I kind of like that. That's the one thing that I hate about Tesla's. Like, you can't buy second-hand Teslas because they disable fast charging and they change it from... Oh, they even change... Uh, I think they change it to DC so it charges even slower. Like, so, for example, if, Goose, you you were to buy, like, a Tesla brand new, right? hmm And um, you decide you want to sell it on. Yeah. When Whoever buys your second car, um, when they go to buy it, Tesla would disable all those features that you bought. That's scummy. That's it's pretty because scummy. Because in their terms and conditions, it's regarded as a subscription and it's only okay. limited to one owner. It's huh. You think the car is expensive enough to just come yeah. with that? It does come yeah. with it. When you buy the car, it has it in it. It's just they lock it through software. You th- again, you think they'd earn enough money from each sale to not have to worry about oh, milking as much yeah. fucking money as they possibly can from each of their consumers, right? Yeah, Tesla's... You'd think so, but... T- yeah, Tesla's... um, Because, like, who was it that turned around and said... It was some software designer or something like that turned around and said that the Tesla soft... Like, their hardware is perfectly, like, is excellent, but their software is shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolute that. trash. <laughs> now, when you get a chance... Um, you'll have to watch a video. There's a guy that took a Tesla and put a V8 in it. Yes, I've seen and that. That's yeah, fucking yeah, okay. oh, that's so yeah. hilarious. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
Oh god! Did oh, you, that's incredible. Did, did you hear about the guy in um, New Zealand that had a Ferrari and put a rotary motor in it, and fucking Ferrari ran after him? They tried to sue him. <laughs> wow, really? What? Yeah, they fucking got angry. They went after him, <laughs> and he was like, yeah. "I'm allowed to do what the fuck I want." And they're like, "No, you can't. You can't do that." And uh, obviously, we won. Bought it from you. you can do whatever I want. <laughs> we didn't buy it from him. It was second hand. It was a second hand Ferrari oh, that was in a car oh, crash, and then no he did it up, put a way. fucking rotor in it, and then yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so scummy on on Ferrari's part. Yeah, oh, it, it, it's all about the image. Well, it's they, all about the image. They would deny you a car if you if you're not a Ferrari owner and you were to buy their um, rarer cars, you won't be allowed to buy it. Well, that's that's like a lot of stuff nowadays. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, if you want to uh, start buying Rolexes, you have to buy like base level Rolexes, and then you know, if Ew. you spend enough money, you may get offered a chance to buy something really nice. You know, yeah. it's that's mm. it's like that with a lot of stuff. It's crazy. Uh, 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 so oh, thank you, Rocking Soybean, for the follow. <laughs> Thank like, you, rocking soybean. Thank you. Uh, yes. uh, I'll show you the uh, the video of the uh, Tesla saying "Happy Birthday." Oh, I don't know. Is that a okay, bot? Go ahead. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, bot. rocking soybean. Why? Why were you a bot? Oh, oh, rocking soybean was a bot. We take back every thanks and uh, everything we said. That that is shit. Oh, and the lights flash and everything? Uh, I'm not even going to bother. That is not worth my time to show. The yeah. lights flash and everything? Wow. Yeah, obviously, That's... um, I know who Rocking Soybean was. <laughs> he was a He's friend weird. in a past life. No. It's tragic. His, it's this person that started. This is what I was um, saying. Like, I was getting annoyed with someone. Someone just started oh. DMing me. And they were, like, trying to carry on about shit like that and no. I was them i just said fuck off basically uh, i got a few of those messages yeah there we go they're done hi i i'm an xyz i would like to help you with this yeah no yeah get stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, myself. if i want something i will ask for it or pay someone to do it i do not need the offer yes <laughs> oh man uh, you know, that's another thing as well. Like, how do you deal with all the bloody bots and the ads and all that sort of crap these days? Um, uh, I, I cannot neither confirm nor deny any of these accusations. This is all hypothetical. So all the ads. Number, yeah. number, number one rule of, of, the, of this channel is everything is uh, on an alleged yeah. basis. That's yeah. it, yeah. A, a, allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly. Everything's allegedly. allegedly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. All the all the ad blockers, all the I, I find if you keep your circle of people that you know limited, you get a lot less of that. You yeah. Know, yeah. You get a lot of the craziness. The more places great. you know you join that have huge communities and you know loose rules about who can join, who can't, that's where you get all the craziness. Hundred percent agree. Yeah, it's like allegedly I've never been over one hundred and eighty-six point four miles per hour. Yeah, <laughs> I've allegedly um, not, you know, <laughs> almost crashed people's, uh, yeah. you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollar cars. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, fun times. <laughs> God damn it! Oh man. Um, what what is like a thing on the road that annoys the crap out of you? With like drivers and stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a lot. There's uh, so being from Pennsylvania, um, there's there's people. So in the different states, they have very different ways of driving. Like people yeah. from Ohio are the worst drivers you'll ever be around <laughs> because they're they're lax on their inspection laws for their cars and everything like that. So. A lot of the cars that you see are, you know, shoddy at best sometimes, but, like, they drive too slow, they follow you close, you know, they uh, change lanes without any sort of signaling, they want to, like, do the bob and weave to try to get 
wherever they can get as fast as possible in, you know, 10 seconds faster than you get to the light. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> but I think one of the most annoying things is when someone turns on a turn signal and then they don't turn it off and you're driving behind them for yeah. a few miles. <laughs> it's a little bit of a pet peeve, absolutely. That, that, that is, yeah. I, it's like an innocent pet peeve. But mind you, here we have the problem where people just don't indicate. They just turn. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I come across it literally multiple times every single every day. Every fucking day. Have you yeah. ever had someone make a left-hand turn from... Okay, so... The way our lanes are set up, you guys drive on which side? Left hand side. Yeah, left. You drive yeah. on the left hand side. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we drive right hand side. Yeah. So you have your right and your left lane. Say it's a, a four lane street. So you have yeah. right and left, left and right. So have you ever had someone in the far to us? It would be our far light. Uh, right lane make a left hand turn so cut through a lane of traffic to make a left turn yep yeah I don't think yeah, I'm across yeah that I've done oh, shit like that yeah it's just oh, opposite you've, for us you've, you've done something like that sir I can't, so I can't do it I have to go so but you're I, literally um, cutting. Yeah, but we've done it. Cut, like, everything was clear. I didn't. I didn't okay, cut no, anyone I'm off. I'm talking like, about it was yeah. heavy traffic. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 nothing no. like that. Not not heavy <laughs> yeah. traffic. I I'm not game enough to just jump out and sit in front of someone. I've only Good done luck it. everybody else. And I've, just you know. Yeah, no, I've only no. done it when like I was learning and um I was just so caught up with trying to like concentrate on driving that I didn't plan the trip. And so, but there was no one else next to me when I did it, though. Okay. So it was like in the middle of the night, and I tried my parents home okay. drunk. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Which reminds, well, that they were they, they they were drunk. I was not. Allegedly, as well. well I mean, I mean, I mean everything allegedly. is allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly yeah, yeah, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, um, back in the the LeBaron days, um, I was driving home. I had dropped a few friends off, and. There was a a road that went so they lived in a place called Hazelwood, which in the area where I lived, it was kind of a, a sussy place to be at night. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of shootings and stuff like that. So I was driving home and it was probably about eleven or so at night, and the road leading out of there was a long straightaway to the city. So I'm doing about forty you know, down the road and just chugging along out of nowhere, two cars, there weren't any street lights. There were two cars stopped in the middle of the road, one in the lane going, you know, back the way I came, one going in the way I was going. And they were sitting there standing in the middle of the road, talking to each other. So, you know, here I come, my lights hit them, you know, and I have to jam on the brakes hit my horn, and they're looking at me like, I'm crazy. I'm like, you're parked in a <laughs> road with no lights on. Talk. I'm like, ah. like, you know, but, I've, you know, you can't yell or talk crazy to them because if they have a gun, you know, anything like that, it's it's not a good look. But I'll tell you what, that was one of the near, near misses that I've had. Yeah. Like, that would, that yeah. would be... That would be one of my pet peeves. People that park in the middle of dark streets with their lights off and talk to each like, other. <laughs> that's that's not even a pet peeve. Like that's just something no. that's just really dumb. Yeah, yeah that is yeah. really dumb. I'll see if I can bring up um my near miss. I'll actually show you. I think I sent it to yeah, you. I a never while saw ago. I, I never, you never saw the saw video. It? I, okay. You told me that you would send it to me and I was supposed <laughs> to get sent and it never made it to me. Uh, I'll see if I can. I gotta find the video. Um, what ha, have you seen? Any crazy, crazy accidents? Oh, oh, a lot of crazy accidents. A lot of stuff. There, you know, it's kind of funny, but some that are pretty close to my house. There's a uh, a Wendy's, um, and it's on a major road. But to pull out of the Wendy's, it's there's a lot of blind spots. So I've seen a lot of people get T-bone 
coming out of there like <laughs> really really bad like because it's it's a major road so people are going like 45 50 miles an hour you know from light to light and you know someone pulls out thinking they're okay with a with a, you know some fries in their mouth <laughs> yeah <laughs> just get demolished but um no, nothing ever fatal that i i well that i'm aware of but um saw uh, a train like guy trying to beat a train uh-huh. through a crossing oh yeah yeah that didn't that end up well works. yeah that yeah. never never that, works that is so stupid because like not only are you putting your life at risk but you're putting all the passengers and the train driver at risk yes like, yes that is so dangerous and in exchange of just not waiting by the train yeah. line for like yeah. five ten minutes yeah, but I mean, now let me ask you a question: Were you ever pulling up to a crossing where you're looking and you're like, "I could probably beat this," but you thought um, about it, but you didn't? No, <laughs> you see, all our crossings have boom gates, so you can't even do that anyway. Even if you so, want to. so we have them as well um, yeah. on almost all of the crossings, but there's still, you know, some of those real rural areas where there's a train crossing that you know, uh-oh. yeah got a little buffering there for a second i got a little worried um what me yeah buffering. but i mean yeah yeah uh, um so i'm just trying to I bloody, mean, um show this videos no no it's not a problem i just i remember being in wisconsin and there was a road that serpentined over the train tracks probably about five times and there was a train coming and i was at the last crossover and I was coming up to it, and you know, I could see the train. It wasn't moving fast, and I was like, I could probably just go through this and be fine, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Like, the thought the thought was there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, like, even in rural Australia, like, I, I always stop and wait oh, yeah. before I, um, before I do anything stupid like that. Cause like yeah, I just I just can't see myself ever putting other lives at risk. So I think uh the town I used to live in, um I th- I can't remember. I actually don't think it had boom gates. Um I think it literally just had it was just a stop sign with some signals and if the train was coming, it would the signals would like if the train was, you know, a couple of minutes away, the signals would, would do the yeah. start flashing and you just stop because it's what you needed to do. Cause I, yeah. don't, I don't think it had boom gates come to think of it, but that was in a real rural, uh, uh, country town area. Oh, man, I'm trying to well, get the video up, but I don't know how to play it in a window on OBS. Um, Hmm. Because, like, normally, like, you open a video, say, in Discord, and then you can open, like, the image in the browser, and you can show in the browser, and yeah. then you can get up on there. But I can't seem to get it to work. Hmm. Ray, I might need That's your assistance sir. on this one. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I could upload it to Facebook and do it that way, but then I might dox myself. Yeah, don't do that. No, don't Ooh, do it. Actually, is. I have an idea. Twitter, because Twitter, uh... I don't give a crap about Twitter. That's all... Open. Okay. <laughs> we'll find a way. Beautiful. We'll- I found a way. <laughs> uh, oh no! What are you doing? Sorry. So K- I, I actually keep talking. Just ignore me. Yeah. No. I, 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 no. That we already planned on it. We're, we're, yeah. no, I'm just we're uh, just gonna be rude. <laughs> I actually worked um, in IT for a company that dealt with train switches and signals for a while. Oh, that's um, cool. And the the technology is just in and of itself fascinating until you get some guy that's an engineer that decides to try to um plug something in that serves IP addresses to train signals into a network and then you wonder why you're getting calls from people saying, I lost internet <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then you have to figure out <laughs> Because your train networks uh, are so much more sophisticated, sophisticated than ours. Because a lot of our systems are all still analog. Oh, really? Yeah, like um, obviously, like the city trains and stuff like that. That's all like you know electric. But like, because we have long distance trains that sh- ships freight 
like between the states and whatnot, that's all analog. So like when the train comes across um a switch There's an old this... man on a crank wheel. No, it's it's analog <laughs> in the quite sense that analog. It's it's analog in the sense <laughs> like the train will hit a switch on the track and the track switch will then activate the lights and the boom gate or Okay. Uh, all all activate the green and red signal to allow a train okay. come through. But we don't have trains going nowhere near as frequently as, as what you guys would have. Oh yeah. It's like it, you probably come across a train every couple of days. Yeah. It's it's like yeah, it's basically only one train that goes back and forth instead of like multiple trains. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um all right, so I got the video up. Here we go. Oh, what 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 happened there? All right, so this is me driving. Ignore Okay. I got the song playing. So it's Man, what's that? A 4K dash cam you got going on there? Yeah, it's 4K. That's, yeah, that's that's crystal you, clear. You like need it. you need a man. This this one also um, has GPS logging as well. So like, if you would ever get an argument with the police, you have something to back yourself yeah. up. So it's really handy. Now, if you look up ahead, you'll see a car that decides to do a U-turn. There he goes. And watch this okay. car on the right speed up. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, she, wow. she was she oh. was she was on her phone what were you thinking i oh, know it's it's not worth being on the phone it's really not i love the song it, i mean uh, so uh, <laughs> my question too is i mean that curb's not that high if i'd have saw that lady coming i'd have just drove right up on the curb now that was me i'm self you know yeah. preservation all the way you know, a little scuff's not gonna not gonna hurt me versus uh, someone plowing in the Yeah, I know, right? It's, oh. it's 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 crazy. It really is. But um, yeah, that that ended up being all around on uh, dash cams <laughs> on, on yeah. all the on the channels. But like, I saw them from a mile away. And the third, worst thing about that car that did the U turn was an Uber driver. <laughs> oh, that'll look that, so, that great look. <laughs> I know, like. I, and like they got such a small car, so I don't understand how they failed to do a U turn like, on well, a double lane road as well. Like now, I, I I'll, I'll type this question to you without saying it out loud. If, uh, just if, if, you, if you're going to say what I think you're going to say, you're probably correct. Okay. okay. Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Both both of the um, both drivers were yeah okay gotcha gotcha um so that explains that one <laughs> yeah so the driver in the next to me was on her phone and uh the driver the uber driver was also um just doing a u-turn but the funny thing was right so that happened and you can't see it in the dash cam because obviously dash cam is like really wide but like yeah. The woman that was not paying attention almost hit them, started yeah, having up. a having a go at the one failing to do the U-turn. And then the U-turn one was giving him the finger and then like having to go at them back. And it's like you're both stupid. Everyone <laughs> yeah. everyone behind has like stopped without any issues, including a big semi behind me. There was like a semi with two trailers in the back of behind me. Him and I pulled up without any issues because we saw from a mile away, because we're paying attention. Yeah. And also, you're 17 foot off the ground and paying attention to the road and yeah, that's on it. your phone. And, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, yeah, that that's a that's my pet peeve is people on their phones. Like, uh, I, I'm not talking about people that like uh, grab their phone out, quickly change a song, whatever. That's you shouldn't do it legally. You can't do it. But um, that's not the problem. The problem is I see people watching YouTube videos. I see people the, texting. Mm. I see people Snapchatting. I, I, I see did, people I doing all of that shit all the time. I, I even was I watching this chick fucking do Instagram photos where she was like putting makeup on to get a nice Instagram photo while she was driving once. Huh? Like sitting there doing the makeup uh, and then she'll like go on Instagram and then do that and apply filters and all that while driving. I'm like, get off the but, fucking road. <laughs> like, so that's, that's the people you see. And yeah. then you, you slow down a lot so they get very far ahead of you. Yeah, or, or I speed up know. so they stay behind. Yeah, me. but yeah. I, I I don't want them behind me because if they're not paying attention, you come to a stoplight. Oh, I just yeah. remembered something. Yeah, but I drive a Ute, so if okay. they, if they yeah. hit me, it'll be very little damage. Yeah, 
and I don't want to replace my rear bar anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. it's a bit of a win-win. Yeah, well, it's already, <laughs> like, I bought the car, and the car was, like, it's got a few dings because it's an ex-farm car, but mm. um, the rear bumper is perfectly straight, and it's one of those big, thick chrome bumpers on it as well, like the big, thick metal. It's, like, three, oh, yeah. three mil thick metal. And, like, within the first week of owning it, I come out of the car park, and there's already a dent in it. Someone's rear-ended me. Oh, man. Oh, and I'm, like... Out. And I, I purposely, like, I'm one of those people that, like, park my car, like, way out of the way so then that way yeah. no one parks next to me. And I still get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are actually just hopeless at driving. Uh, I don't know if it can be helped at all. There's, like, another pet peeve of mine as well. I don't know if you can relate, but say you do that, right? So you want to park away from everyone because you know people just suck at parking and driving. So mm-hmm. you park and there'll be like 20 car park spaces. You're in the middle of nowhere. No one's around you. And you're like, cool. Come back and some dickheads park next to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. I think people, they, I think they people want just to be like close. a reference. They want to be close. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. it, it's almost like if you go to, uh, if so you're walking down the street and you stand in front of a door. Yeah. Even if the door, like the place is open, and if you stand there, people will line up behind you. Oh yeah, <laughs> and wait. <laughs> so I, I feel like they see that, and they're they probably like, "This guy's got the right idea. I'm gonna park <laughs> away so I don't get hit either, or maybe they'll hit his car and not mine." You know. <laughs> we had that with a camping camping trip once. So we go camping. We used to go camping as a family. Like this is pre-COVID, all the time, mm-hmm. and the place that we go camping is like on the river. And um, so, like, there's no toilets or anything like that. So, you got to basically yeah. bury your crap and whatnot. And, um, but we had one of these, um, it was like a bucket. So, they sell a bucket, it's got a toilet seat on it, and you put a bag in it. And that's how mm-hmm. you go to the toilet. And then we have like a toilet tent, and then we put the toilet tent like off the side. So, then that way, you know, it's not near our sleeping. We don't smell anything yeah, and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. So, there was this family. That decided, like, this is, like, a, one of those places where you don't have a designated camping spot, but, like, you kind of like to spread each other out. This family of, like, five turned up with all their kids right next to us. Like, like uh. I could I could take two steps and I'd be touching the side of, their, um, side of their, like, cars. And so what my dad did to get rid of them is one morning... Uh, the, the next morning, he, I, because the toilet tent, they parked right next to the toilet tent, which was really stupid that in itself. <laughs> so in that morning, he like opened the zip up to let it air out while he was taking a shit. <laughs> and so when they come out of the tent, which they did, they just see this guy taking a shit right in front of them. <laughs> and then they, in, in an hour, they moved. <laughs> I'll take my eggs sunny side and some bacon. That um, that, chop, that chop. is a very effective way of doing that. Oh, he used to he used to do that with like uh, Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons and shit. Who would answer the door naked just to get them to never come back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was very common for my dad to do shit like that. You guys here to do some yard work? <laughs> <laughs> I got a pot for you to clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's so funny. Yeah, the, the the people on the phone, like, that's the worst. It is. Yeah, the, I don't the, get it. The, the bad thing, too, is with people on the phone when they're not paying attention and that the light changes. Oh, and yeah. Then, then you hit the horn, like, real quick to let them know, hey, and they get upset with you, and you're like, what the... <laughs> Yeah. In what parallel universe are you living in? And I, I like try so hard to give them a friendly to you know they're like dude, dude. yeah, and not yeah. not a, wait not, a second yeah yeah, and they're just like fuck you cunt. <laughs> yeah, you, you give it a sec too, like the light changes, and you're like okay, I'll give them two seconds. Yeah, and then yeah. you're like then you give them just the quick you know, <laughs> you know the quick one knuckle, and it, oh yeah, just, I I don't just get it. Bad. I also don't understand, like, so when I make a mistake, I, like, I, I recoil, like, like, I, like, get all, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, sort yeah. of thing, like. Yeah, you're, you're like, person. you put your hands up, sorry, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I am so apologetic, like, if, if someone bumps into me, I say sorry to them, like, it's just <laughs> who I am, like, I'm a person <laughs> yeah. that doesn't like to, like, 
avoid, you avoid conflict where necessary. E- exactly, yeah, because I'm not a fighter. I don't like to fight. I mean, if I have to, I have to, but I try and avoid it as much as possible. Yeah. And um, I don't get when people make a mistake that they get so embarrassed and worked up, they then, like, become the aggressor. That I've never yeah. understood. Yeah, I didn't get it either, actually. Yeah. You mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. like how how I dare you, it. you know, yeah, catch me doing something wrong. Yeah, like um, mm. there's a person I'm not going to mention anything, but particularly this person when they make a mistake and you point it out, they get all angry with you. <laughs> it's like why are you angry with me? I'm just like telling you that this went wrong, and you know, just to let you know so that you can keep an eye on the future. I'm not like being a dick or anything like that about it. And they mm. just they just they just like twist it around and they get so aggro and it's like it's okay. People Hunter. make mistakes, you know. If it's Ray, blink two times. I'll protect you. <laughs> uh, we all know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So right, Ray's playing uh, Star Wars. Oh, hi, Mishi63. It's a sign it's... of immunity. Immaturity, I- yeah. Immaturity. immaturity. Why don't I, I can't read. So close. You, you, so, you can't pronounce <laughs> Nissan right, and you obviously. <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> That's not a bit of a It's really funny. I'm immune from this. This is a lie. I I um I can't fucking. Oh. What? Don't worry. <laughs> you fucking clicked. <laughs> Something just popped into your head? I think no, no. I, I've just connected a couple of dots. Oh, okay. <laughs> I th- I think okay. I've connected those dots too. Am I thinking what you're thinking, Spliffy? Hang on, one second. I'll, I'll send you. A, yeah, I reckon it is. I'll send you. A, I'll send you a DM. So I gotta ask Spliff, your name is it Wismore or Wisemore? Wismore. Okay, just I just you know didn't want to mispronounce it. Did you because, ever you know. explain where you got your your name from? And did you know, Goose, that Spliffy's name is banned on almost everything? Yeah, because really? Spliff is, Spliffy, yeah, Spliff yeah. is a drug yeah, reference. It's a joint. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you write Spliffy and they ban it. And it's like, but it's not the drug. Yeah. Well, I, I probably, I don't know if I should. Um... Allegedly. Um... It's oh, all allegedly. I, I sent them the wrong fucking. Uh, hang did, on you, one did you just message some random person? <laughs> <laughs> no, I sent, I sent it to um, I sent it to the uh the uh Ray Stumpy and and J Zero One. Uh, okay, that's um, all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, that's no, fine. That's fine. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. um, so back in I it was <laughs> it was uh, February two thousand and seventeen was when I came up with the name Spliffy Wismore because in in, in twenty seventeen. Or about 2016 to 2017, I thought drugs were the funniest thing on the planet. And the only reason I thought it was the funniest thing on the planet is because I've seen people uh, high on marijuana and you just ask them random questions and they just have no clue what they are just so out of it. (laughs) And that to me was just the funniest thing. And so it was about 23 past five in on i think in february i can't remember what day but it was about 23 past five in the morning um and i was just crushing some cardboard boxes um with uh with uh, da, 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 da. and then i was i was thinking about it. i was trying to think up with of a name for a D character at the time and for some reason i just connected drugs and whatnot and came up with spliffy wismore well, dr- drugs mo- most notably marijuana, but um, but and a legend was born. And- <laughs> <laughs> so um, the uh, what's it? Ah, oh, hang on. So Spliffy Wismore, the origins of Spliffy Wismore in in the original D and D character is a black acid dragon that uh that was that whose uncle adopted this this uh kid called billy and um (laughs) perfect yeah (laughs) 
And uh, he used to own a volcano, like a, uh, a, a volcano. What was it like a? He used to sm- uh, used to grow marijuana in, in a volcano. I totally in his ripped underground off lair. Big zone. Yeah, pretty much. I totally ripped off uh, Big Les Show by in, in creating that. Um, That's but cool. uh, it was a lot of fun. And then yeah. essentially, Billy the Kid grew up and then betrayed uh, oh, no. Buffy and his uncle <laughs> and took the and took the the uh, the weed uh, volcano from them and then uh, banished not the weed Buffy. volcano. Absolutely. Whenever it erupted, Ab- the the land got high. It was so absolutely, good. and um, and so <laughs> Bliffy was banished, and then the entire campaign was Bliffy getting back to the weed volcano to claim his his, <laughs> his property back after his un- after Billy the Kid had killed his uncle and banished him. I, love I, it. I am so glad that I asked um... this question. Uh, oh I, I don't think I've ever actually gone into depth about it. Besides uh, a friend of mine who who the DM from like 2017. Boy, see, um, that, uh... see, your background is so much more original than mine. Uh, not really. I ripped off the Big Les show. How no. original is that? I mean, it's. Original. I mean, I feel like after that story, I need a spliff. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. Um... I also... I, sorry, I, um, to put it on like a, a more wholesome note, I also uh, I also think it's kind of cool how like the the mellowing effect that marijuana has on people as well. So I I guess that's something I always strive to achieve without the consumption of marijuana, of course. But I'm always just hyper stressed. You'd like I to guess. be the drug without the drug. Yes, I like that's to why... not stress so much. Yeah, which is very difficult from very difficult. That's why he has the soothing blue tones in his avatar. I like it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all yeah. making sense. That is, that is 100% the reason and not a last minute, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> but Work with me here. Like I'm giving you. you. What about your origin stories, Goose? Yeah. I need uh, to- my origin story. I mean, honestly, I was given the nickname when I was a kid. I don't know why. Oh, really? Um, it was just something my dad just, you know, it was, he used to call me Goose, and he used to call me Rune. And I, I'm not sure why. I never really asked him. But it just stuck. Like, you know, what 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 do you play in a game? You need to make a name. Oh, I was always called this. That just became my nickname. You know, it just, it was from probably six or seven years old it's just always been a thing that's still a cool it's like, not it's still a cool little story because it's not something yeah. that you just like thought of like i like i like geese yeah yeah you know? i like yeah geese. I, like, I was <laughs> half suspecting that was the reason why like that's yeah. pretty cool i'm just yeah. gonna call yeah. myself goose yeah, yeah. i'm that's... just gonna call myself goose and you know yeah that's cool that's like um but then it... sorry no 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 go ahead um Nah, I. That's like, my, like, it's it's funny when people like make their own nicknames and try and get people to yeah. call them those nicknames, and it's like, call me T Bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and it. What was great about it though was like, it like probably what in the last ten, eleven, twelve years. Like the goose thing just started going crazy. Like you yeah. have like the untitled, untitled goose game, the goose with a knife, like all that stuff. And then I'm like, Haha, you know, it's paying off finally. <laughs> Peace was never an option. That's yes. It. Violence is always the way. I'm not saying I needed a magnetic goose, but I sure feel safer with one. <laughs> And it's just a goose <laughs> with a knife stuck to it. <laughs> uh, now, my origin story is... Um, so, back in 2001, I had two uh, two profiles. One was not banned, but was banned, uh, I reckon, 2005, 2006. And then Dart Elite Hunter... Um, was my main profile and it was because I couldn't write the in my gaming tag for the Xbox because this is on the original <laughs> Xbox days and um, the reason why I called myself Elite Hunter is because not because I kill elites in Halo but because I was 
I, I thought of myself as like a, a good hunter at the time, like in real life. And oh, man. So, so it's kind of like an ego thing as like a, you know, little, little me. And, um, <laughs> and then people like, were like, oh, so you hunt elites on Halo. Cause that was a game that I used to always play. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that's where it kind of like stuck. <laughs> I, I totally didn't take a trophy buck down at 450 yards. Yeah. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to mention publicly ever the, uh, other profile name and good luck to anyone. Yeah. Who's gonna find it. <laughs> Same with my YouTube YouTube account. Um, that was banned back uh, in the day, two thousand and six. Oh man! When, now we're gonna have to make a spinoff show about yeah. hunting because I've got some stories for uh, you, sir. Ooh, <laughs> you, you can share them. That's fine. We still got uh, time. No, I just like. Uh, I, you, I mean, you can obviously my, leave out um, stuff that you don't yeah. think is no, no, no. appropriate. No, but, yeah. no. I, so let me ask you a question have you ever gotten lost while hunting like no, you've ever no. gone somewhere no, okay I, well yeah i was pretty good at tracking and stuff like that so so uh, you do you, are you familiar with, with with what mountain laurel is i'm guessing yeah. probably not it's not something so no. mountain laurel is a very dense bush yeah um so uh me and my buddy he has a camp that we go hunting every year um and it's up in the mountains and we always go hunting on mount davis yeah. and we park the truck we walk in you know find spots so the one year i'm i'm walking and i'm sitting for a while waiting to hear anything and there's on these mountains is always a lot of mountain laurel so that's where normally the deer like to bed down. Yeah. So I decided I would walk into the mountain laurel some. Found a nice place, a nice log, sat down for a while. I got back up and I turned around the way I was coming because, you know, I'm going to go back the way I came. But the yeah. problem with mountain laurel is it grabs onto you. So as it grabs onto you when you're moving, you may turn a little bit. You may, oh, you know, yeah. so... So I came out of the mountain laurel and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to continue walking straight because that's the back the way I came. Now this was, you know, still, there wasn't a whole lot of technology and I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm like, okay, this is definitely not, you know, the way that I'm supposed to be going because I would have been back already. I've been walking for 25 minutes. I know I would have seen the truck or a road. So I'm like, well, in that, you know, that case, you have two options. You can, you know try going a different direction or keep going the same direction. So I kept going the same direction. I come to a road finally, and in the mountain, there's logging roads. Yeah. So I go to this road and it's basically, you look both directions and it's a 50, 50 shot here at this time. You could go one direction and you could be walking for miles and just go, you know, deeper into the, the mountain, the, the woods and everything. So I decided to go right. And there was no real, it's trees everywhere. You couldn't make any, you know, sort of markers or anything like that. So I take the right. I end up finally getting to um, a main road. And I'm like, okay, I'm on a main road. There's no signs anywhere. There's nothing. So I'm like, now I got to make another choice. Did I, do I make another right or do I go left? So I make another right, eventually get back to the road that we came in on. And I, I, probably walked a good three hours yeah. to get back so i was basically halfway through you know hunting boots yeah. as good as they are they keep you you know insulated warm and everything but they're not something to do mile treks in blisters on the back of my feet you know yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, yeah. I got back to the truck and i just laid in the back of the truck, set my rifle down, unloaded everything, and just laid there. And my buddy finally shows up and he's like, oh, where you been? I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The mountain laurel. <laughs> never again. <laughs> yeah, no, I um, oh. I was fortunate that my dad, um, he's a real sort of bush basher sort of bloke. Like, he, mm -hmm. he should have been born in, like, the country um like he grew up like in new guinea um as a kid so like he's he's used to like being out the bush and 
having to yeah. learn to track and like find his way around without maps and shit like that because um, he used to hang around with the New Guinea and kids and whatnot. And so he learned a lot from them. Um, so when we were kids, like my dad was very um, emphasized on like uh, survival. So he would teach us like how to not like it's not like in a lesson per se every time we go camping he'll yeah. show us new tricks and and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah but the one thing that we would never ever go camping without of is the compass yeah that makes sense um so you know so the like, fun thing yeah yeah um so we, we never really get lost sorry for interrupting no 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 <laughs> uh, but see that's the thing like going hunting i would always bring i had the metal container that's sealed up that had waterproof matches mm -hmm. i had a a emergency blanket i had all that stuff you know so i wasn't worried i'm like you know it you know it was later in the afternoon and of course it's winter time because yeah. you know you deer season is you know for us in the in early um early winter um antler deer that is um so I'm like, okay, well, I knew what time it was when I came in, you know, I didn't have a watch because, you know, hey, you didn't bring a cell phone with you. you there were cell phones, but it was worth nothing. It was a flip phone. Yeah. You know, you couldn't get signal up there anyway. Um, but I was like, you know, if worse comes to worse, you know, I'm going to be fine. But it's just like, I didn't realize just how crazy Mountain Laurel was because it was... I'm six foot four, and this stuff was probably seven foot yeah. that you're walking okay. through. So you can't see, you know, very much when you're in it. And just, you know, you had to, like, basically, you couldn't hold your rifle in any way that it wouldn't get somewhat caught or snagged, or you wouldn't get snagged. So it was just, I learned a very valuable lesson that day and was never go into very dense mountain laurel without, yeah. you know, at least cutting your way in or something like that. But, you know, it's a lesson you had to learn. You know? <laughs> yeah. You only learn it once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we, um, I used to love our camp, our hunting trips. So it was so much fun. Cause over here in Australia, like we do hunt deer, we hunt pigs, um, you have to have special permits to hunt roos, which we did have tickets for, uh, rabbits, foxes. Oh man. Um, all sorts of animals and whatnot. But, um, foxes were always fun because they were just so cunning and smart. And the ones that we used to always chase after, like we've only ever gotten one fox because all the others were just too smart. <laughs> so they just outsmarted <laughs> us. They were really cunning. Like these, these, uh, these foxes have been shot at before. They know, they know how to fool oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> It was fun. Uh, yeah. Master of, um, of what dexterity. Oh, it's not that they were tricky. So like there was a mating pair at this, the place, the property that we used to go at. And this property is huge. Like, um, this property that we go shooting at goose is like the size of a city. Okay. It's, it's, it's massive. So you're like, it's about, oh, wow. it's about three hours to go from one side to a, well, not three hours. It's about, it'd be about a three hour walk from one side to the other side of the property, kind of like what you were talking about, but it's about, it's about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes driving one side to the other. So it's like, it's not like as big as some of the stations. Like I've been to a station that is bigger than the Sydney and surrounding area that literally takes hours to cross from one side to the other in a car. Um, so it's not that big, but anyway, so it gives you a bit of a scale of things. And yeah. there's this male and female fox, now a mating pair, and we've been after them for years. And every time we come across them, they would sit just outside of the range of all their rifles, and they know it too. And um, so, and, and, and like, I mean, we could try and shoot them over a kilometer away, but like, you're not going to hit them by the time. If I, if I raise the barrel up about, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, they would know that it's coming. They're not. They're yeah, not, yeah. Not, they would see the flash and then they'll just run. Um, but this one day in the Ute, I'm in the back of the Ute, so I'm like, you just imagine me standing in the back of my dad's Land Cruiser Ute with a rifle on the roof and and yeah. spotlighting <laughs> yeah. and whatnot. And um, and the male ran out in front of us and we're like, 
oh fuck yeah <laughs> and so next minute the chase is on and um we're trying to chase him down and the next minute the female comes and crosses in front of us and the male disappears and then now we're chasing oh. the female and they did this oh, for fucking they ages <laughs> they did this for ages and then um oh, we that's really cool they yeah they they fucking got us and we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't get them there's no way they we were like no, too fast. Here's what we're gonna smart. do for a fun Friday night. Yeah, we're gonna fuck with these hunters, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so they got away, and we realized that what they were doing is they were leading us away from their den. So they must have had cubs. Oh, yeah. that is oh. clever. Because the one, the one fox that we did manage to um, get one night was one of their cubs, a young one. And the only reason why we got him was like he he would have been a year old, I reckon. But the only reason why we got him is because he, we were, we were driving up and we we're going up this this kind of steep hill and then it sort of flattens out and then on the other side there's like the farmer's tip where they chuck all the rubbish that they don't want to deal with, and um, and he was on top of the hill and we was we were trying to get this rabbit that was just sitting there and we we're lining it up next minute this fox comes out of nowhere, and then gets a rabbit and we're like winning. <laughs> So then we get the fox and um because he was too focused on the rabbit he didn't want to let go he, like he was looking directly at oh, us man. he was determined to get this rabbit and unfortunately um it was our first fox that we ever got um and we reckon that fox was the offspring of those two two older ones so we were, we were joking like i bet you they knew that we got them so that's the reason why they stayed away from us but yeah it's fun because they're, so they're, many... they're a pest here. That's the reason why we shoot them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. of course. They're introduced. I, 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 yeah. I believe I actually have one living in the woods behind my house. I, I have has to be about 40 coyotes. Yeah. I mean, like, and I live probably a good 10, 15 minutes outside of the city. And so if a police siren goes off at night or fire department siren, the coyotes go ballistic. Oh, like, really? I mean, yeah, I mean, hooting and hollering and, you know, yelping nonstop. Oh, it's, it's, it's something. So like 3 a.m., it's, you know, sleeping with your windows open. You'll wake up when you hear 40 coyotes going insane <laughs> because of a siren. It's definitely a uh interesting interesting thing to deal with coyotes are a cool animal like because they're native aren't they to your areas I, I mean they shouldn't be native to a city yeah but yeah yeah they're definitely they're native to you know america but i don't know how they made their way but now they live. <laughs> I mean, like you get feral dogs and stuff, so they probably yeah. just live just like a feral dog does. But like, well, just, I, I find them fascinating because, like, a lot of Americans that I speak to just have like a hatred for them. Um. Well, it's not so much a hatred, more of just the destruction. Like, we have a lot of deer, a lot of turkey. Yeah. You know, and being that the coyotes will then you know kill the deer and the turkey and everything like that so they actually put bounties on you know because they're dogs they're going to reproduce so i remember there may have been two or three a, a couple of years ago now there have to be over 40 i oh, mean wow. I, 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 yeah i mean so it's you know it's to a point where they're just going to keep mating and you know it's just going to get worse and worse so yeah that's um because my special uh in uni like i did um behavioral and ecology a bit biodiversity and conservation is like the degree that i that i have and um there was a lot of talk back in the days um in research about human impacts on predation and the ecosystems and whatnot and um there was a lot of emphasis on that because of the effects that we have caused through natural destruction and land clearing that because we have basically reduced biodiversity these apex predators such as like uh, over here sea lions for example um have grown so far out of population because um 
there's nothing really attacking them anymore because we yeah, to keep it the, in check. Yeah, the, so we killed off a lot of the sharks. Therefore, there's less sharks. Therefore, there's more seals. Therefore, there's less fish because the seals eat all the fish. And now the seals have started eating penguins, which they normally don't eat because there's not yeah. enough fish, so they're eating other animals. Anyway, so they did a study to find that if we um, have culling programs and um, hunting programs and then they compare it to the biodiversity increase in that ecosystem, they actually found that if you have a controlled culling program to keep the numbers at, there's an actual equation for this where it's like, it yeah, there's promo- probably like a big point. It promotes, yeah, by controlling one species, you can control the um, growth of biodiversity, therefore increase the chances of species to grow in an ecosystem and have more species rel- readily available instead of just being only one dominant species. Um, a good example of this is in a grass species where um, you get a grass over here called buffalo grass and it grows like crazy and it's a it's a noxious weed and it out competes all the other grasses so what they do is they um do a controlled burn and it burns off all the um these buffalo grasses but all the other species they normally out compete do really well in um uh fires like they they yeah. they're growing accustomed to fires so they will then suddenly increase in biodiversity and there's multiple species of them while the buffalo grass isn't present anymore. And so it promotes growth and whatnot. Just, yeah, it's fascinating to me. If that's the same thing as we have here, we call it pompous grass, but could be. you can basically have like one seed drop and then a year later there's like giant bushes and there's like four or five of them. Yeah. You know, they just take over. And like if you try to cut it down, like the, the edges are sharp. So, you know, you get like paper cuts yeah. and, you know, just, it's, it's just a pain in general. Yeah. We have a lot of plants that are like that. Um, olive trees are real bad over here as well. They, they grow everywhere. Oh. Olive trees. Yeah. But yeah. isn't that a good thing? Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I they, mean, I mean, yeah, they you don't can, produce, you, you can eat them. Yeah. But, um, yeah. they kill everything around them, destroy the soil. Yeah. 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 Sort of like pine trees here, you know, you get the yeah. pile of needles that yep. just constantly fall underneath it. So it's just barren underneath. Have you noticed that in pine forests, there's never any animals in there? Hmm. None that you could see. Yeah, like, uh, there's always insects and shit, but whenever, like, I go into a pine forest, the birds don't go in there, the marsupials don't go in. I never see them. Well, there's in there definitely often. squirrels. Yeah. But I think what it is is being that the the limbs are so flexible, yeah, and it's so dense, you don't hear the noises that you would normally hear. You yeah. know, it's a lot yeah. of sound dampening with the with the pine, the needles, yeah, and the, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a pretty good podcast. I hope you enjoyed yourself, Goose. Oh, had a blast. That's good. Um, thank you everybody for coming to watch. Thank you for those who participated in the chat. Um, thank you, Spliffy, for your help as well. And That's for any time. Thank you, Ray, for being Ray. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope thank everybody... You the newcomers as well. Yeah, yeah thanks for I'm those not people saying who followed. I, I, not saying. I'm not saying I didn't see those glasses where you... Glances to the side where you're scared for your life. It's okay, Hunter. <laughs> <I got you. laughs> All right, as soon as I turn off the camera, I'm going to get beaten. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's when you keep the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter it's not true um all right yeah, so, like, <laughs> i saw him look over so no. allegedly <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so thank you very much i hope you have a good night and evening depending where you are in the world and we'll catch you next time see you guys later